Most of the problems in our life, as you can see, are wrought from greed, selfishness, insecurity, misguidance, and ignorance. Education can alone be the bomb to these wounds. Through education that is enriched in moral guidance, we can breed more humanitarians that will stop being a burden to society and learn to help it. Our youth are dropping out of school, not learning, not taught to deal with moral issues, and hence get involved with drugs or end up with jobs that make them struggle to survive. They ultimately cause obstacles to enter their lives. Our children are becoming people that need to be helped rather than people that can help others on a global scale. If wars and violence and suicides are caused by greed and security and ignorance, then isn't it viable that we direct our attention to improving the education of children to prevent these harmful events from occurring in the future? Why do we continue to soothe the symptom when the root of the problem is this? What I propose to you now is to look at the great responsibility that lies before you. The responsibility that you have to guide your children or other children under a moral umbrella. We may look at the TV screen and feel useless to what is happening in the world, but we do have control of what sort of future we can produce. I can almost, I, I'm almost asking you to understand that we as human beings, I'm sure you all know this and I've learned it just now, that we never really have a break from our duties in life. We never reach an age where there's nothing left to do. If you are a child, your job is to soak in all the knowledge you are given. As a teenager, your job is to use what you have learned to understand how best it can be utilized so that your dreams can be achieved to make you, help you to make your mark in this world. Sometimes the teenager must learn to give themselves the love that they never received. The teenager, we are told, are endowed with special capacities and they are in better position to understand the processes and forces operating in this critical period. It says here, the present condition of the world, its economic instability, social dissensions, political dissatisfaction, and international distrust should awaken the youth from their slumber and make them inquire what the future is going to bring. It is surely they who will suffer most if some calamity sweep over the world. They should therefore open their eyes to the existing conditions, study the evil forces that are at play, and then with a concerted effort arise and bring about the necessary reforms, reforms that shall contain within their scope the spiritual as well as social and political phases of human life. This is regarding the 1985 Year of Youth by the, established by the United Nations. The designation of 1985 by the United Nations as International Youth Year opens new vistas for the activities in which the young members of our community are engaged. The hope of the United Nations is th in thus focusing on youth is to encourage their conscious participation in the affairs of the world through their involvement in international developments and such other undertakings and relationships as may aid the realization of their aspirations for a world without war. Undoubtedly, it is within your power to contribute significantly to shaping the societies of the coming century Youth can move the world. Something for the youth to think about. As adults, and especially mothers, as you saw through that devotional PowerPoint, your job will always be to encourage the youth and remind them of the gems that lie hidden in them. Bring them out. Fight for their spiritual education. And if they don't receive moral empowerment in their schools, sign them up for institutions on the side that will help them understand how living a moral life is both a service to themselves and a service to those people around them. Take classes like this summer school, where you are surrounding yourself in an environment that soothes your soul and the souls of those that you ultimately go out and meet weeks after the course is finished. In the Baha'i Faith, we are taught that each individual human being mirrors or reflects the qualities of the divine, the supreme ruler, God, 
What an amazing thing. So it means that you and you and you and the children in the back all have qualities and gems within them that mirror the divine. If we learn to cultivate these gems, these qualities within us from our youth, there will be a promising future for this world. One that you can acclaim that you have helped to build. I'm going to stop talking for a second and I'm going to leave you just to think on your own or maybe with the person next to you what your role is into creating a better future, whether it is encouraging your children to receive moral education, or if you are a youth yourself, what classes you will partake in, uh, if you are a grandparent, how you can aid this process to come along. I will leave just five minutes for you to think, to contemplate, maybe share with the person next to you, and then afterwards I'll just pick on some people that would like to share what they have come up with. I will circle around some papers that have just summarized this talk a little bit to maybe stimulate you're thinking. Stop. <laughs> um, I just want to quickly close with a clip. My mother sends me a bunch of forwards, you know, the ones about love and friendship and the life of the environment and preserving love and all that stuff. Sometimes I don't have time to read all of them, but I'm glad that I did read this one. It was about a youth who could have been perceived by the ignorant eye as one with a disability. But through the support of his mother and the strength in his character, he learned skills that people would even, couldn't even dream of learning. You can imagine what sort of impact this child will have on all those who meet him and all those who cross his path. Good luck with your gems and enjoy the time.